everybody. What's going on? We are back at it again. TVNT podcast. Hope you're doing well. Yes. Happy Saturday, guys. Mm-hmm. We've got an, an announcement. Mm-hmm. You know, since our inception, we have been a Friday show. But, you know, getting back to life, starting this in quarantine was like a different thing. Yeah. And now that we're living life again and the outside is open, like, Fridays don't work. Thursdays don't work. Yeah. Our work schedules, my school schedule, it's it's just a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, to get it together for, for Thursday and Friday. So we're a Saturday show now. We're now a Saturday show. We're a weekend vibe. I kind of like that. We're just like calm cool you know what i I like it too because it's a little it's different yeah we're recapping the week right of tv and tea exactly i i love this for us oh and like a sunday morning tea right and a pod right love it for us love that for us (laughs) so we hope you guys um will enjoy that you know a little bit of a different vibe but our show is officially moved to Saturdays, and we will have new episodes for you every single week, mm-hmm. as usual, per use. Yes, ma'am. So, what? Start us off with a quote, Cece. How you feeling this week? What's going on? What happened? Tell me. Okay, guys. So <laughs> every week we start off the show with a quote from a movie or TV show, and this week my quote is. From Project Runway, mm. the iconic Tim Gunn statement, make it work. <laughs> make it work. Make it work. Okay. And that's just how I've been feeling this week because it's a lot going on. I'm about to graduate in a month. Woo woo. But before that, I have to do a whole lot of stuff. They're making me really work for this degree. <laughs> they do that they're really making me work so i have to just make it work (laughs) hey sometimes you just gotta push through Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm it's hot out here but (laughs) it's hot it's hot (laughs) but what about you um my quote comes from the nanny and Niles says oh miss fine is it that time of month again she goes i'm afraid so niles it's time to make my credit card payment (laughs) And like, boy, do I feel that in the depths of my soul. Mm -hmm. I've been spending money, baby. Like, I've been running up a check. Like, I don't know, like, what's going on? I was looking at my bank account. I'm like, what? What? But why? But why? (laughs) The outside is so damn expensive. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I... These past couple months that, like, everything has been opening, I know I've been spending a lot of money, but I think it's just, like in such stark contrast to last year not spending any money Mm -hmm. and i'm just like life was not this expensive before (laughs) but it was i'm just like what is going on like they're really taxing the outside and i don't appreciate it yeah me neither so yeah um you know pray for me and my wallet um because it doesn't look like i'm gonna slow down anytime soon and you know it's expensive yeah like people are here wanting to plan trips and it's just like I know. Were, the, were the trips really that expensive before I, Girl. Ju- I just booked a trip for august and you know we might have a family trip in august as well i'm just trying to hold it down yeah it's <laughs> i need to like hold it down in july and just like vibe yeah um and then like come back in august maybe yeah i feel you so yeah that's what's happening with me (laughs) (laughs) well that's good i mean speaking of money we could you could do a little one two little little scam little fraud little stealing oh my god (laughs) you know what's so funny like i have a friend and she was like dog all these scammers in miami like i need someone to run me a credit card (laughs) like I feel that, but I just feel like that's bad karma. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I will say, though, and this relates to the show that we watched this week, I always root for the robber. 
Oh, yes. Like I always do. And funny enough, this week I went to a press conference. Mm -hmm. I was covering a story about um, fraud against the elderly. And the state attorney, she was talking about this one case. And she said something along the lines of this man defrauded uh, elderly people in a community of $890,000. And in my mind, I was like, wow, that's really bad. But in the other part of my mind, I was like, as he should. <laughs> Get your bag, King. <laughs> no, Selena, not the elderly, though. Like, I, know. I have limits. Like, I think if you're repping off the government, no problem. True. Like, that's a victimless <laughs> crime. <laughs> <laughs> they printing money out of nowhere, y'all. Right. But I think if you... The little old people... No, like, the old that, people... I feel bad yeah. for them. They've worked their entire life. They're in their retirement. They're old. They're sick. They're close to death. Like, you're going to take the little little bit of money. Like, I feel bad for the old people when it happens to them. That's true. I don't feel bad for, like, tax fraud, you know... Even, like, financial crimes, like, with stocks and stuff. Like, I feel like those are all victimless crimes. Like, you shouldn't actually yeah. go to jail for that stuff. Yeah. Like, definitely insider trading is... Oh, my God. That this is isn't a- fair. Right. And it's definitely not, like, this is immoral. <laughs> like, who came up with insider trading? Like, right? I understand it, but at the same time, I'm like... Why am I being punished because I got the lick? <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like most crimes, they have victims they're immoral they're bad but like there's a difference between that and unfair right it's like I feel this like, world is unfair right like a, a, a hater really came up with that for real <laughs> <laughs> yeah no so i definitely felt bad about the old people getting defrauded and yeah. he's in jail now so like that's pretty good okay hopefully he just got a little bit of money stashed away uh-huh. i mean i feel bad for everybody and i'm just like people need their coin right it's yeah. hard out here yeah but speaking of people needing their coin this week <laughs> we watched lupang lupang part two Part two, second season, we jumped right back in where we left off. I don't know about you, but, like, I had kind of forgotten, like, where we left off. So when the show started and we were, like, back on the run for his son, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, oh, I didn't realize we were, like, starting immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what I expected, but I was just, like, not expecting. I almost wanted it to be, like, a new story. I was, like, over the story. (laughs) Okay, so I had the same thought. I felt like the pacing of the show was weird, and it felt like one season broken in two. Yes, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like, I just wanted a new story. I was, like, over this one. I was over the old guy and the necklace and the girl and the son. I was just, like, over it. Yeah. And this season, I, I was just like, okay. Yeah. I was in it. I was enjoying it. But at the same time, I was like, I want to see him do, like, I want him to, like... I don't know. I just wanted to see more. Like, I almost want... Like, when he stole the painting and gave it mm. to the to Juliet. You wanted that to be the new story. I wanted that to be a story. Like, I wanted mm. to see him perform a heist. Like, I wanted to mm. see the planning. I wanted to see the whole, like, production of it all. Yeah. And I just didn't get that. Yeah. So... Lupin, the gentleman burglar, mm-hmm. is on Netflix and it is about just a quick recap in case people forgot. It is about a man in France that is a burglar. He steals a famous multi million dollar necklace. Mm-hmm. And you think, okay, he's getting into it, but really he has like a vendetta of revenge because the people who own the necklace, they framed his father for stealing it back in the day, ended up killing his father. It was like a whole thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, he wants to expose them and basically get back at them for what they did. Yes. And uh, this season, it tied up all the loose ends. I like how it ended and I did enjoy the show, but the pacing was definitely off and I just felt like they could have done that whole story arc in like an eight episode series. I completely agree. Yeah, and then give us something fresh this time. Yes, I could have done without some of the back and forth that he did with Juliet. Yeah. I don't, I hate to say this, but I just like hate the women characters on the show. Like, I don't like the woman that plays Juliet, and I don't like the woman that plays her baby mama. Like, I'm just like so sick of the women on the show. Yeah. Um, so I was like struggling with the characters. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I thought in the 
first part, I think I thought they did a better job of weaving in kind of like the police investigation mm. storyline with this one. I felt like it was almost like two different kinds of shows or writers like putting their stuff together and just yeah. kind of giving it to us. And I just like wasn't loving this season. But I like the guy that plays um, Lupin. Oh, he's fine. He's like he's just so tall yes and there's just something about a tall man like i will just never not be attracted to it's yeah. like you, it's the age-old question is he hot or is he tall but he's usually just tall and they wear clothes well <laughs> yes. and they just look statuesque and mm. yeah i will say they style him so well <laughs> it's very parisian but it's also like like fresh he's got the sneakers the trendy and um nike stuff but yeah. then he wears a, a suit, suit so well yeah did you see the meme about his outfit no <laughs> there's a meme that's like oh <laughs> it's like the boy hat the <laughs> the coat and then the sneakers he's like put these three in a blender and you get you get loop on <laughs> it's so funny i mean they're not wrong they it's, weren't wrong it's peaky blinders in 2021 yes like gangster chic i loved his friend this season what's his name oh um i don't remember the friend maybe henry Whatever his friend's yeah. name is, I loved when he had that like slick back yes, ponytail vibe. At the end. I was like, okay, he did what he had to do. I was like, all right, look at you looking swaggy. Yeah, the took men, off the glasses. I was like, oh, okay, I'm yeah. feeling this. And even the little young guy that they got with the circle glasses. Okay, see, this is what I wanted for the show. Mm -hmm. I needed like the crew doing yeah. a thing. That's what I wanted, but I just, like, didn't get enough of that. And I just felt like some of it... Like, okay. They're at the this concert. They have set up Juliet's father to basically be arrested for embezzlement, mm -hmm. which he was just doing on his own. So they just kind of, like, laid the trap and caught him in it. Yeah. And presented it to the police to be able to... For him to be arrested. Mm -hmm. Um... But I just felt like the way they executed that scene at the end in the final episode was he was just like running around and running away from security guards. Like I wanted him to be like doing more. Yeah. I just felt like he wasn't. It wasn't James Bond. No, I wanted it to be a little bit more intricate. Like this, yeah. these are difficult things and you've laid this trap and you've set up this plan I just wanted it to feel like he was on a mission and he was doing things. It was just like Definitely. a lot of like walking through hallways and like running away. And then he had that one fight scene where yeah. he just kept getting his ass kicked. And I was like, this big nigga can not fight. Like, what yeah. is the problem? I mean, I think, <laughs> I think they were trying to find... They were a little confused about Lupin as a character because I think they tried to find a balance between gentleman burglar, very suave, knows what he's doing, James mm -hmm. Bond vibe, and regular guy vibe. And I feel like they made him a little too regular. They wanted him to be kind of normal, I'm assuming, and that's why he didn't fight that well and he wasn't like as trained as some of the professionals. Yeah. But, like, I feel like he should have been. I feel like he should have been, too. Like, yeah. you've never taken a boxing class, sir? Like, why yeah. do you keep getting your ass kicked? Mm -hmm. I just, like, did not understand that. I was like, he's so much bigger than everybody he's fighting. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, what's happening? Yeah. I feel like uh, they kind of missed the mark on that one. Um, and also, when, on the last, uh, like, heist thing, when he was just running for his escape... The escape should have been more elaborate. It's Lupin. And you're right. telling me he just ran out into the hallway? Right. Yeah. And changed his outfit? I just was like, I wanted it to be much more intricate. I thought they could have done more with it. Yeah. Even getting on the boat. Like, mm -hmm. just that whole thing. I just wanted more of it. Yeah. I loved the new little guy friend that they brought along, that they yeah. found in the library. Mm -hmm. I thought... That character was great, and yeah. I thought he could have done more. He had some really good dialogue. When he was talking to Pellegrini that first time, Yeah, he convinced me. I was like, oh, this is some young, like, techie guy. He gonna embezzle, you right. know? Right, embezzle. <laughs> he was like, 
And he was really like trying to figure out like, is Juliet involved? Oh, yeah. Okay, he's, she's not involved. Okay, we're going to leave her out of this. Mm-hmm. I liked how they weaved him into the story. I thought that was smart. I think that's a, a nice little side character to bring into season three. They've yes. already said at the at the end of the season that season three has been greenlit. It's coming okay. in 2022. We love that. Love that. I want the trifecta to like take down some more stuff. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love, now that he's on the run for murder, even though the police know he didn't murder that guy in his apartment. Yeah. Um... I, I kind of want them to travel. Like, I want them to end up in the Middle East. I want them to end up in Africa. Like, I want them in Morocco, like, doing some wild, crazy stuff. Yes. I want them, like, tying back to France. Like, we've got the, the young kid doing some cool computer shit. Yes. Like, that's what I want from season three. I need them to up the budget, up the production. Really International. Get, yes. Yes. I want McMafia vibes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. When is McMafia? Is it coming back? I don't think so. At this point, I think it's oh done. Oh, my gosh. That hurts my soul. Because, right. guys, that show is everything one season on amc so good watch it highly recommend but yeah i mean all of this to say that i didn't not like lupin right (laughs) yeah no like i did like it i like the main guy the story wasn't bad no um i just wanted something fresher yeah and it was a true continuation of where we left off Oh, definitely. And one thing I do like is um, the flashbacks. I like seeing him as a little boy. Me too. Um, And I also like when things play out and you're like, oh, okay, it played out normally. And then you go back and you see that it was all strategized. I love that too. I love that too. I love it. It's very Ocean's Eleven the way they do that. Definitely. Yeah, I like that aspect of the show a lot. It's like you see Lupin walking on the street, running into Homegirl, and you find out that he had planned that a week before, and it's this whole thing. Right. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Me too. I like how they unfold the story, and they give you layers. Yes. Um, Yes. I love a flashback also. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's great. Definitely recommend watching it. Season two was good, but I really hope they bring it in season three, because I feel like Everybody loves this show. Yeah. So I really want them to do the damn thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely a good watch. I enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. And I will say, if you haven't watched the show, now is a good time to watch because it did feel... You get the full story. You get the full story. Yeah, it did feel weird watching season one and season two separately, but watching it together is a good vibe, I I would think. Yeah, I I would agree. Mm Mm-hmm. Completely. All right, guys, it is time for tea. Tea. Let's get into it because Mm -hmm. there's just, there's a couple small stories and some really big stories from the week. And yeah, yeah. let's start small first. Do you want to start off with your favorite podcasts, girl? She's not my favorite anymore. Okay, now I pr- now I prefer Sophia with an F. <laughs> okay, Alex Cooper from the Call Her Daddy podcast has officially been snatched away from barstool Mm -hmm. and she is bringing her podcast to spotify exclusively yes and they are reporting that she got a 60 million dollar deal as she should as they both should like this really goes to show that she was getting robbed one, she was getting robbed, and two, she was really drinking the Kool Aid and trying to push Sophia out because all Sophia wanted was for them to come together as a duo to s- demand more money, which they should have gotten. Obviously, mm-hmm. this is proof of that. That one yeah. year later, she's getting sixty million dollars, and Sophia was just like, "Let's ask for a million each." That means that mm-hmm. the value was there. Okay, so you just gave me a whole other perspective to this because these deals don't just happen in a month. No. Spotify must have had their eye on them from before this. Mm-hmm. And Sophia knew that, probably. Probably. Or she saw the, the value the potential. and the potential. So she was like, I want us to be able to get some of our yeah. value back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Alex, uh, she she negotiated a year contract. She kept the IP. 
Um, she knew that she was going to be leaving Barstool within the year. She said it to her audience. I listened to those first couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it seems very calculated. Oh, for sure. I just think it's really shysty and mm-hmm. selfish that she pushed her out and then did this. Like, yeah. obviously, they're they're on two different platforms now they've gone on to do their own things yeah um it's just if i was sophia i would feel like so hurt i would feel really hurt as well but the one thing i will say is that she is independent Mm -hmm. so she's getting all of her money yeah which is really good in my opinion i feel like she's making or on track to make that anyways okay so that's really good because the show was really popular i have listened to her guest on two different podcasts that i like regularly Mm -hmm. listen to and i really like her she's so funny yeah (laughs) i actually really like her and i enjoyed both of those interviews and she was talking about kind of like did you listen to the skinny confidential one of course i did okay yeah (laughs) um lauren and and michael are like literally my favorite (laughs) people um but yeah like i loved that interview with them and she was talking about just she's like i didn't realize that we could get that much money and when i was brought to my attention i was like yo let's try to get this money and she ousted her for that Mm -hmm. and really like tried to take her down which is just uh, i don't know i just feel like people like that shouldn't win but Mm -hmm. obviously they do and that's just one of those unfair things in life but this is just very interesting i mean call her daddy did lose some listeners though because uh, i mean it's probably not a significant amount of listeners because it's still one of the number one podcasts but i stopped listening Uh, my best friend stopped listening a couple of other fans of the podcast they said it's just not the same without sophia so she's winning but at what cost like her content has gone down a little Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think it's really hard to podcast by yourself Mm -hmm. to build a solo podcast that's got like the kind of just it's like the audience only has one person to identify when there's only Mm -hmm. one person and there's no one to like bounce off of so i think it's really hard to podcast by yourself and it's like of course there would be a drop in kind of like her value and just kind of that spunk that they had together yeah and sex podcasts that are based on personal experiences are so hard to maintain because relationships change and i mean now alex is at the point that she started the podcast when she was single the stories were wild and fun now she has a boyfriend so it's not the same dynamic yeah and you see the same thing with a lot of other sex podcasts that you know the hosts share their own experiences and the brand is based on them yeah so yeah it's hard but i mean she's doing it yeah Mm -hmm. i really wonder about spotify's just like money situation like you have infinite money (laughs) where are y'all getting this money from i just don't understand what's happening on spotify and i wonder does it bring that many people into the podcast to into the platform these huge podcasts that go exclusive on these platforms does it really bring that much more listenership to the platform as a whole Well, I am not the person to ask because I do not believe in paying for streaming services. Mm. I don't believe in it. I have other people's accounts. I'm one of those. (laughs) I pay for Spotify, but I've had Spotify literally since like 2014. Like, I Mm -hmm. feel like I was one of Spotify's like first people, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've had it for forever. Um, I hate the tv streaming platforms like the 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 streaming wars on the tv front is totally annoying to me yeah the only one the only new one i support is hbo max yes that's a really good platform but all of the others um i'm good yeah i and i believe in netflix oh netflix is the og that goes without saying yeah it's netflix hulu and newly inaugurated hbo HBO max Max. i've never paid for hulu i don't pay for any of them (laughs) (laughs) i don't know i don't really see the value in hulu if you have regular tv um hulu has some good originals 
Well, you watch like Handmaid's Tale. I don't yeah. know. I just feel like their their originals are not worth it to me. Mm-hmm. I see. To me. I see. Okay. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, next story I want to talk about. Victoria's Secret has finally joined 2021 and <laughs> is going to rebrand. They are officially getting rid of their angels. Mm-hmm. And they have signed a what they're calling the VS Collective, which is a group of, you know, celebrity spokespeople to represent the band. So it's going to be soccer star Megan Rapon, Priyanka Chopra. There's an LGBTQ model, um, trans model that is Valentina Sapiro and a few others. So they are trying to build a new, deeper relationship with all women. And they want to create new, like, collections with these women to you know broaden their kind of like scope and just their branding okay so this seems very contrived right and inauthentic Mm -hmm. whoever did this pr i don't it's it's not fresh it's not new it seems like somebody who's from the old school of pr that has become quote woke right yeah right i mean they've they have come under fire so many times they said you know back in like 2017 2018 they were like we're not hiring trans models (laughs) trans models or plus size models Mm -hmm. they're not expanding their size ranges um you know they wanted to fit a very particular fantasy and that that was their brand yeah and they didn't want to come into the times that we're living in now that is just broader and more inclusive yeah um and now they have lost a lot of market share their sales have really plummeted and they're on the verge of bankruptcy and so they're like they want to turn the ship around but it's like has the ship taken on too much water Mm mm-hmm kind of thing so because this kind of like last ditch efforts that it's like they've brought in somebody that's probably heading up diversity and inclusion and you know they're bringing on board you know a wide variety of people to represent them and it's just kind of like as jojo would say it's just a little too late (laughs) it's just a little too late yeah and i mean i'm not that big of a fan of the celebrity brand spokesperson in general anymore Really? I'm not that big of a fan of it. I feel like get some models. Get some diverse models. Like, I don't need Priyanka Chopra selling me underwear. If I want celebrity underwear, I'm going to get Fenty. Hmm. Because Rihanna does it right. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and just the celebrity spokesperson in general. I mean, Laverne Cox being the new... um, E red carpet yeah. host. I just feel like, no, why didn't you get an entertainment journalist? I think social media has kind of ruined celebrity. Definitely. And it, like, they're just too, like, regular. Because mm-hmm. it's like, they're on the same platform that I'm on. And yes. to me, it just seems like, I don't believe you when you say, like, oh, you love Victoria's Secret now because we know all the nitty gritty behind it. Like, we know how much money you're getting from this. We know that you've negotiated this. Like, it just, it, we just know too much. Yeah. And we can technically, like, regular everyday people that have built platforms for themselves are in the exact same position as somebody else. Yes. So if you're doing brand partnerships as an influencer with Victoria's Secret, it's like, what's the difference between me and Parankara? Exactly. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Huh, interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just think this is just a little too late, and it's they just took such a firm stance on yeah. like anti everything. Mm-hmm. So now I'm just like, really? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, where was that energy before? Now you're singing a new tune. Why? Because we canceled you, right? I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan either. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now the big story of the week that drama 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 <laughs> that i feel like everybody is just talking about now 
Chrissy Teigen, Mike Costello, mm. Leona Lewis. Yes. It's a lot going on, baby. Yes. So to recap a little bit. Okay. Chrissy has been low-key canceled. Like been canceled. Because remember a few months ago when they stopped selling her her cookware? Yeah, well that yeah, that happened when the kill yourself tweets came out. Exactly. With um that girl, the blonde Courtney girl. Stodden. Courtney Stodden. Courtney Stodden. Yes. So the saga continues. Yes. She decided to make a little comeback with a statement and it didn't go over so well. Yeah, everybody, she basically came forward and said, you know, I've been laying low, I've been keeping quiet, and I, you know, have been reflecting on my past, you know, problematic tweets and actions, and I've been in therapy, I've been doing a lot of therapy, and, you know, basically she was saying, like, at the inception of social media, like, you were supposed to kind of be as outrageous and kind of nasty as you could and Mm -hmm. that was kind of the environment and it wasn't correct it wasn't right um there's a lot of people that didn't take that route but I was one of them and unfortunately I'm embarrassed I'm shocked I'm horrified with myself and you know I've had to reckon with that for myself Mm -hmm. um but a lot of people just did not think her apology and kind of her her statement was much more than just like her trying to smooth the waters over. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think if you have to apologize to the internet in like a, a notes, yeah, like you've lost definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, it just it just gets very weird. People don't. It just doesn't ring true. We've we've seen too many of these. We're mm-hmm. too deep into social media now to care about apologies on the timeline i think that's what it is yeah definitely um so that happens Mm -hmm. and then about a day later the designer michael costello he was on project one way he now has his own brand he has designed gowns for a lot of very famous people yeah he came forward with a story about chrissy Teigen saying that he has been on the verge of suicide for the past couple years because of Chrissy believing tweets that were apparently doctored. Um, Supposedly. Supposedly. (laughs) That were showing that he um, was making racist remarks. Mm -hmm. And so he released the the text messages and the DMs that he sent to Chrissy, basically, that she had said... You know, you're canceled, you're done, you'll never work a day in this town again, it's over for you, yeah. you can basically go kill yourself. Yeah, she, again. she said something <laughs> along those lines. It and was rough. Michael was like, please call me, please reach out to me, like, I'm, I want to clear this up with you, because she had previously ro- worn his clothes. Yeah. And... And I think she commented publicly yes. that he was canceled because Basically. of the racist remarks. Yeah. So, you know, he was like, because of this, I've lost a lot of opportunities. She's basically like blackballed me mm-hmm. b- with, with her friends. And the stylist, Monica Rose, do mm-hmm. so you know who that is? She used no. to style the Kardashians. Mm, no, I don't know. And but... she styles Chrissy a lot. Okay. Okay. So... Her and Monica basically went about blackballing him from certain Mm -hmm. events. He says that there was opportunities that he had that just went away at the last moment. No explanation. And he just can only say that it was probably because of Chrissy and Monica. And this has left him depressed, severely depressed and suicidal for many years. So that happened. Mm -hmm. Then (laughs) Chrissy... Then made public statements in response to that and was like, I basically, I don't, I don't really remember what she said to him in response, but she was basically like, yes, these things happen, but I thought we had kind of like smoothed it over and it wasn't like, why are you bringing this up? Basically. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then Michael had a couple women come forward with stories of their own encounters. kind of encounters of abuse from him. We There was a model, a black model that came forward that said that he had referred to her as the N-word on multiple occasions and um, just some very problematic racial things that had been said. Yes. And then Leona Lewis, the the singer, came forward with a story of her own saying that after a fitting for a photo sh- for a fashion show that she was going to walk in his clothing in, um she was left embarrassed and just very uneasy about the entire interaction and she thought that it was because of her size and then she was asked to no longer walk in the fashion Mm -hmm. show and so she was just left you know basically with a pitter in her stomach about this whole encounter but it goes there's more oh (laughs) gosh then he came back with screenshots of like just last year, May 2020, your team was reaching out to me for more clothes. Like, I've dressed you on many occasions since then. I was in your home in 2019 for a fitting for something. Like, I'm sorry. I did not know that we had beef. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. The plot thickens. I hadn't followed through with all of this. Yes, I have been following all of this because, I don't know, I'm just, like, obsessed with all of this. <laughs> Um, so there's just been a lot of back and forth out of all of this. Yeah. And basically what I'm taking away from this is everyone is a problem. And like, you can't, (laughs) (laughs) you just can't, you just can't anything. You just can't like, she came forward with her story because she's like, I feel like this is the pot calling the kettle black. And then it was like, he was like, whoa, 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 sis. He said, if you had a problem with me, why didn't I know? Right. <laughs> and, and then that just weakens the whole argument. Yeah. Because it's like, if your team is reaching out to him as lately as last year... Like, if you were really that uncomfortable and felt that bad about it, would you still be working with him? I don't know if you would, sis. Yeah. So it just weakens the whole argument. Mm Mm-hmm. But this really just all goes back to Christy Teigen to begin with. And (laughs) (laughs) she's the problem. She's definitely the problem. Like, aside from all of these different kinds of things, like, she, like, basically blackballed him. Mm Mm-hmm. Because he was, his, I felt like he kind of died out a little bit. He did. And when I was like looking through all of the timelines and things, it just kind of, it all made sense. Yeah. This interaction went down in 2015. He was like dressing Beyonce in 2014. Yeah. And then after that, he just kind of died out and you didn't mm-hmm. really see him on red carpets anymore. You didn't really see his brand like pop the way you would think it's yeah. gonna pop after Beyonce wears your dress to the Grammys. No, he was popping and his designs are beautiful. I think he makes beautiful Me dresses. Me too. Yeah. Um and then it just kind of died out. And like he has his line with Revolve, but like mm-hmm. you just don't see him as much as you did a couple years ago. Yeah. And I didn't really realize why. Me either. Mm-hmm. And I guess it was because of the whole canceling. Yeah. Yeah really really sad um i mean i just i just don't know it's it's a whole mess people really i don't know like why anyone thought like i can just say everything and anything on the internet and it's it has no consequences like i don't get that mindset yeah me neither because i feel like i came up when like twitter was really getting popping. I was in college. So I was an adult, but I was still young and Mm -hmm. immature. And I have gone through old tweets and I'm like, ooh, that doesn't really sound great. But I also was not like harassing people. (laughs) (laughs) I also was not harassing people. Yeah. Um, So I don't get this mindset, but I can understand like a troll is a troll and they're just going to troll. So she was just the ultimate troll. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because that same trolling made her famous. Like, people really loved her for that. Mm -hmm. That's why she was popping at one point, because she was witty and funny, and she was making social commentary. Right. But when does the social commentary turn into... Harassment. And bullying. Right. Yeah. It's, It's hard to comment on somebody else's life. 
Yeah. Like, that's a real person that has to see that and live through it. Yeah. It's just interesting because people have been, like, quote-unquote canceled for old tweets. But this is, like, really... She's really... She's down bad right now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. She, She needs to just hold it down. I mean, something I would say to anyone who's canceled is don't issue a public apology because you're just opening up the wound again. It's another headline. Chrissy Teigen apologizes and it sparks backlash. You know, if uh, you get into a scandal, lay low. (laughs) Don't say anything. Right. And then just come new with a new project. Right. And people will forget. (laughs) Right. Like, her mom was supposed to be dropping a cookbook and at this point, I don't know if she even did. Yeah. Like, because there's just been no, nothing positive coming out of that camp. (laughs) Yeah, no, nothing positive. And it's just like, she needed to not say anything, take a couple years, I mean, I don't know, maybe a year minimum, and then come back with something new. And on the, um, what's it called? Like the PR tour, Uh say, I've taken this time to reflect. And I put all of that pain into my work. And if you put out something good, people will love it and forget. True. Because you can't cancel the somebody works. if they're talented. Let the work speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so much of her brand is her personality. Yeah. And it's like her it's personality gone. is not popping anymore. It's like Ellen. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. In Interessant. Mm-hmm. That's just, I don't know. It's just a lot of back and forth. It's too much for me. It's really messy. It's getting really messy. Really turbulent Gemini season. (laughs) Oh my God. Honestly, like I cannot wait for Mercury retrograde to be over. Like I need it to end. Same. It's just dragging me by the hair (laughs) at this point. (laughs) Yes. uh, It's making me feel drained, but we're almost out of it. (sighs) can't come soon enough anyways thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the tvnt podcast go ahead and subscribe to us wherever you are listening you know all the places and wherever you are listening go ahead and leave us a five-star review 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 (laughs) um that's that new kind of thing um tell us something nice and if you're watching us on youtube feel free to subscribe and to give this video a thumbs up and we will be back next friday with another episode to serve up the tea on the latest tv and pop culture news bye guys bye